Hello guys, today is going to be another video with some old footage that I recorded uh, quite a while ago. Uh, I think this might have been 2019 when I done this. And basically what I'm doing is upgrading uh, the wiring in the Massey 8680 from the sort of dual Arduino setup that I had with one Arduino in the cab and another one in the body. And above the Arduino in the cab, you had one of the larger NRF 24L01 modules, so not the SMD version, the actual true hole version. So we can change all of those electronics down to just one of the new control boards and one of the motor driver boards, and that will all easily fit under the bonnet. The reason I would have set the model up like this was because it was one of the first models that I done and I wouldn't have been as familiar with uh, expansion uh, ICs for well that I could have used with the Arduino so uh, in retrospect well using two Arduinos isn't a great way to go and then the communication between the two chips is kind of dependent that both chips are in sync to some extent so that's why the newer control boards would all rely on just a single Atmega chip with uh, expansion on the motor driver board if needed. In some circumstances you might need that many pins but the way I've set up the control boards is to try and maximize the, the usefulness of those control boards I guess. It's to make sure that we can control all the channels of the motor driver chip and still have plenty of free pins for our LEDs. It looks like I installed the NRF24 module fairly well here. It's uh, it's not coming out without a fight by the look of things. This is quite a big module. It's, it's probably twice the size of the SMD module that we're now using in the newer boards. So that was quite a lot of space to be uh, taken up. But I think I managed to get it in quite nicely when I was doing it that time. It was quite a tidy design when I was finished. Hopefully you're enjoying these types of videos. I'm trying to get them out a little bit more regularly now. So if you want to get notified of the next video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and get the bell on so that you get notifications. So when I made this model, I just used the LEDs that I happened to have at the time. So I have a few bright white LEDs in the front, but in the rear, the LEDs were actually blue LEDs. And when you turned them on, they were actually a lot brighter than those in the front. So we're going to have to change them out and make sure all the LEDs are matching with a nice super bright white. So all there is to it is to just cut the LEDs out. We'll try and save the resistors that are already in position in the cab because there's not much point uh, cutting them out they should work just as fine for another set of uh, super bright white leds as they did for the blue leds so we just solder the new leds in place exactly where the blue leds previously were and this is just a master class in camera work here so I skipped across some of that and now we have our LEDs installed. So we're connecting the ground wire here. And now we have all of the LEDs in the top of the cab connected together. So when we turned work lights on, all eight LEDs come on at once where previously they were connected uh, separately. That didn't really make much sense it just meant you had to hit another button to turn on the leds which wasn't really much good we've also got uh, some super bright white leds in the front here so we'll connect those into the same uh, circuit so that we just need one pin on our uh, atmega chip to to turn on all the leds so all the work lights will be connected but they won't be connected to the headlights so you will still be able to put on the dips and the full beams as normal and then hit another button to turn on the work lights so here i'm just showing you the wires for the leds on the left hand side of the cab so just two wires coming out of it now that'll be one indicator for the left hand side of the cab and the work lights 
and we just skip on another little bit and now we have all our wires connected for all our LEDs so we have the two red wires for the working lights the two green wires for the indicators the white wire for the work lights and the blue wire is the ground and we'll skip ahead again we have the cab now back together the wires are I think reasonably tidily down the side of the kind of pillars I guess it would be the A pillar really and uh, the top of the cab is back on so now we'll hook up our uh, power so that's ground and we'll just try out some of the LEDs here so there's our work lights right hand indicator left hand indicator right side beacon and left side beacon so everything is working as expected and it's a hell of a lot tidier than it was when we started and next comes the very difficult task as it is on any model you're trying to work on it's feeding the wires through the tight spaces that are in the body hopefully you don't have to modify or you know drill any extra holes in the body if you can avoid that it makes it a little bit easier but it's always going to be quite difficult and now we have the model sort of back together we'll just see how the lights look now so that's our left indicator right indicator there's our work lights and if I move the model on screen there we go now you can see the left beacon I think yeah left beacon and the right beacon and if we spin the model around we can take a look at the lights on the back here's our tail lights and this is the work lights including two on the mud guards and that's where the footage ends I'm not sure why I didn't record the rest of it because the model is on the shelf there with uh, one of the motorboards installed but we'll take a look at that in another video so if you liked it uh, don't forget to hit the like button and if you want to discuss the video go down to the comments below the video or you can head on over to the forum on the website Hopefully it won't be too long until I get the next part in this series up. I'm thinking I might use the new PCBs that we're getting professionally assembled uh, in this one because it already has the motor driver board. So it should just be a case of program the control board and plug it in. But that's everything for today so I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks very much for watching.